Hey, hey, hey. The objective of this video is just some basic probability rules. So, turn to page five of your notes and let's get it started. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, the idea of sample space. Let's look at it um, pictorially. As we're looking at it pictorially, first of all, that's event A, that's event B. Event A and B, in this case, are inside of all possible events, which is the sample size. So here are all possible outcomes. Your sample size, which is this rectangle right here, is equal to 100%. And if you're wondering, well, how, Ms. Yarbrough, can this area that, I'm, that you're pointing to, how exactly is that um, a part of a probability? Well, it's because this area right here would be the probability of A nor B happening. So, A is happening here, B is happening here, right outside here, right outside here, right outside there, any angle you want to look at it from, this is the probability of A nor B happening. Okay, let's just continue. Probability model. Well, first of all, you know the sum of all probabilities is equal to 1. Our notation, probability of event A. And an overall, what is probability? It's an idea of chance. I had to switch these two because I wrote things down so nicely. So here, like I said, um, A event is an occurrence, and I have event A. A complement, and you're not losing your mind, like I said, I switched it. A complement is the probability of A not happening. So um, you'll hear me say A not sometimes. So the probability of A not happening is 1 minus the probability of it happening. So let's face it. What's the probability of you getting um, a, um, the probability of you getting a particular job, okay? So you're worried about it, like, I need this job, I need this job, okay? It's complement is the probability of you not getting the job. So, and hopefully you don't have to worry about that because you'll get it. Okay, go ahead and turn to page six. Basic probability rules. Well, you know probabilities um, occur between 0 and 1. The probability of any event, uh, any given event is between 0 and 100 percent. I need to put a percent there. And as you can see here, as we look at our notation, the prob here is just saying there's event A. It's going to be between 0 and 100 percent. All possible outcomes, when you add them up, is equal to 100 percent. So you know what that means. If I have 25 freshmen, 25 juniors, 25 um, seniors, and 25 sophomores, what's the probability of all of them? Well, 25, 25, 25, and 25. Yeah, I chose nice, easy numbers simply because I don't want to do any hard math. Okay, next. Pull out your whiteout strip. That's what I just did. So, the probability of event A is written like this, the probability of A. Now, here's when stuff gets a little complicated. When something is disjointed or mutually exclusive, that's when two events have nothing or have no common outcomes. So, that means the probability of event A and probability of event B is equal to zero. So, let's look at my drawing. Okay, so here... Here's event A, here's event B. I kind of think about disjointed as conjoined twins that were separated. So once those conjoined twins are separated, here's twin number one, here's twin number two, they are not connected. So that's what I think of when I see disjointed or um, mutually exclusive. They have nothing in common. And when that happens, the probability of those events, the and, well, this happened and this happened, but where did it happen? Where's the and? Where they overlap? It's not happening. So, it did not, there's nothing that occurred at the same time. I mentioned this earlier, back to the idea of a complement in terms of the notation. The probability of A not, so the probability of A not happening is 1 minus the probability of A happening. And here, the, and here I have it in writing.
seriously was trying to avoid that bell. Just about to put it on pause. Ah, sorry about that. Okay, addition rules. Okay, now here's the thing. When something is mutually exclusive, which means that there's no overlap, you're just going to add your one group and your second group. That's it. So it's also the notation, the probability of A or, remember it's a union, or B. When I say remember, you know, based on your um, prior um, reference. Remember they have nothing in common. We're going to do an example of that in a minute. Okay, now here, addition rule continue. The probability of it not being mutually exclusive. So not being mutually exclusive means that they do have some overlap. Let's draw a picture. Little tiny fella right there. But here's event A, there's event B. You see the overlap right in there that I'm going to darken? That is, this is the idea of not mutually exclusive, okay, because it overlaps. So we have our conjoined twins that have not been, you know, disconnected. And here's event A right here. Try to squeeze in a small A, squeeze in a small B. Eh, you can't see that too well. Hopefully yours is better. Now let's do an example. Let's consider some shapes. So I have here three balls, three red balls, eight balls total, four red squares, 18 squares total. So that means I have a total of 26 objects, the eight and the 18 to give us 26 total. I want to know the probability of a, a red ball or a red square. Well, there's three out of eight. So someone just came in, so I hope that I'm picking up at the right place. So the probability of the red balls, there are three out of eight that are red that are balls. Probability of red squares, there's four out of 18 that are red squares. Okay, go ahead and do the math. Oh, is it possible to get both a ball and a square at the same time? The answer is no. So this is an idea of a situation that is mutually exclusive. You can't have a ball and a square at the same time. Okay, so 59.7%. Now, what about another scenario? Well, first of all, let's remember the probability of a red. I've got three reds there, four reds there. So the probability, first of all, I've got seven reds out of the total number of objects, which is the 18 and the 8, which is 26. So the probability of a red is going to be 7 out of 26. The probability of a ball here, I've got 8 balls out of the total, which is 26. So, which leads me to my question. My question is, what is the probability of um, randomly selecting a red or a ball? Well, here, that means it's the probability of the red plus the probability of the ball and there's going to be an overlap, which is the red ball. So, okay, so my goodness, I was interrupted again, so let me try to remember where I was. I was talking about the overlap. You could have a red ball. So, I've got the probability of, of um, red, which is 7 out of 26. I got that from here. The probability of having a ball which was 8 out of 26, but remember, 3 of those um, balls that I had were red balls. So, what I'm doing is looking at, where did it go? My red balls that are red balls divided by the total number of objects, which that's where the 12 out of 26 came from, and then you can just do the math to change it to a decimal if you want. You know, for those of you who are asking, Ms. Yarbrough, you left that as a decimal, you made that a decimal, left everything as a fraction. The only reason I made that a decimal is because I didn't feel like dealing with the fraction, so. TTFN, ta-ta for now. Probably gonna have to do this over again because how many interruptions? Sorry. Peace out.